What's up, y'all? Dale, newairbarbering.com. Welcome back to another customer interview. Today, I'm joined by a customer of the Elevated Mentorship Program, Paco Silva. Paco, what's up, dude? What's going on, man? Nothing much. Appreciate you being on here. So, of course. me and Paco, shit, dude. I've kn- It's been, like, what, since 2018? Like, I've known you and, like, we've worked. About, yeah. Yeah, so we've worked in, like, of course, when I had that prior program. You, you were doing that. We are kind of talking beforehand before the... Uh, we started recording about like that, that journey. And now being a customer elevated mentorship program, of course, like when you started EM, uh, you were at 30 bucks. Now you just had a price raise effective. Like last week you went up to 75. I definitely want to have this interview kind of go over like, you know, your journey. We were talking a little bit before about your journey, becoming a barber, going through the many jobs. Also want to cover like maybe just your struggles early on as a barber, even coming into the, uh, the EM program or even like struggles you had, uh, with the last program. And then, you know, trials, tribulations, you went through price raising. I know we have a little bit of uh, stagnation in when you did raise prices. And then just, of, of course, like any other, anything else you want to cover in this thing. So I guess the best place to start is at the beginning. So like, how'd you start cutting hair? What's been your journey like so far? So um, when I uh, first picked up a clipper, I was 13 years old, 13 years old. My mom actually was cutting our hair in the backyard, giving us uh, the zero, the good old zero. And so one day she just got tired of it. She said, like, you know what? You do it. I was like, okay, all right. You know, and at the time I didn't know I, I liked, I loved it. I, I just I was just doing it a fast time because at the time I was living in a, in a small ranch. There was, there was really not much to do other than to either get in trouble or to keep yourself busy. So I obviously chose to keep myself busy and boy, did it keep me busy. Um, when my brothers didn't, didn't uh, want to get their haircut, I forced them like, <laughs> I dead ass forced them and uh, I, I started um, just buzzing them with the zero. And then from there, um, I definitely started getting a little better with my dexterity doing this, right? You know, because I'm sure you've, you've uh, picked the clip before when you started cutting hair at first. It was a little weird. So um, as time went on, uh, I got better. My dad actually started trusting me. So I started cutting his hair. And then from there, I just went on from my dad to my cousins to my uncles and et cetera. Um, it started getting really, really uh, serious once I got into high school. That's when, that's when I felt like it started getting more and more. Like, all right, you know what? Let's start charging. I think I started charging like five dollars, no, three dollars, three dollars. It was three bucks, and and uh, I remember just getting home from school and starting cutting hair from four o'clock to like nine. I don't know. It was it was, it was very very like. Uh, it just kept me busy the whole the whole time. Um, obviously, after high school, uh, I stopped cutting hair for about maybe, maybe like two years. But I was like very very like on and off. Um, I did work in the fields for maybe shit two years, three years maybe. It was the man. Let me tell you, man. The, that 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 field work is <laughs> is not for the faint of heart. Like that that that, that will definitely show you what you're made of. Uh, I've done a bunch of other jobs. I've also done truck driving. Um, I did that and I will still get home and cut hair. Mm. So you, you, yeah, you was, just, you just never like you, you, and this is still when you were charging three bucks, even when you were truck driving. Um, I was, I, I actually, you know what, when I went, when I was doing truck driving, um, I actually went up to five. You were doing five bucks <laughs> doing truck <laughs> yeah. driving, dude. Jesus fuck. I would get home and I would still get, well, cause at the time it was like, oh, it's just friends, you know, friends, okay. right. You know, and I would get home and it was, it just seemed like just. It just seemed like like hanging out with my friends, you know. So it, it, mm-hmm. I, I didn't care, you know. And back then, uh, back then, once I turned eighteen, I picked up a horrible habit of freaking smoking cigarettes. Mm-hmm. And I, I would I would tell my clients, "Well, bring me a pack of cigarettes, and I'll I'll cut you up." No shit. Yeah, like, wow. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and then uh, over time, I I started I, I started I was like, you know, what? I don't fucking need this habit. I want the money. Like fuck this habit, you know. So I went up to ten, and then. Uh, I stopped that fucking habit, and then I went up to ten, and I started focusing more on just uh, um, improving my my quality of of, of cutting hair, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then there was this one day, man. Um, I got home from from working in the fields from five. I think I got home around six. And this day, man, it was like it was like a hundred and twelve degrees outside. And it, and when I got home, there was people waiting outside for me to cut their hair. Like it was like around six. And you could just imagine in a hard ass garage, man, just me trying to cut up sweaty ass scalps. You know, like it was. It was it, it it was not the ideal place to be cutting hair sure. for sure. When when you say you like know? field work, what do you mean specifically? Um, I did uh, uh, hoeing the weeds, you know, oh, taking the man. weeds out of the field. In, in hundred degree weather, dude. Fuck. 
Okay. And then and then I did uh, bell peppers. I, I picked bell peppers for a season as well. All my back all day, bending oh over God, all day. Oh my God, dude. Yeah. And and then um, what else did I do? I did tomatoes. I drove tractors and stuff. Mm. Hauled uh, the trailers and had um, transferred the, the the trailers to um, the freaking place where they sorted out the tomatoes or whatever. Mm. Uh, I did the melons. Melons was pretty hard too. All my back all day picking the melons and throwing them into the trailer. Yeah, it was it was tough, man. And I'll still get home to cut hair. Yo, I was gonna say like, why did you never just transition early on? Like, you know, you had you obviously you had like people interested. Like, even though you're only charging five bucks, you you had like people interested when you would come home to cut their hair. Like, did it just never seem like a serious thing long term to you? Did did you just think barbering wasn't like long term like a good situation? Well. Back then, barbering wasn't is what it is today. Mm. So back then, barbering was like, are you cutting? Oh, so you're just cutting hair? Oh, I, that, that's cool. You know, like it wasn't really like a, a career choice, right? Like, like even my 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 dad was like, like, well, if you're gonna be cutting hair, I want you to work still. So. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I'm I think like, cool. I think everybody has that. Like, man, I've heard. I mean, we we're just talking about Alan Luna too. Like, um, I think I have him on a uh, customer interview tomorrow. Um, so that'll be an interesting one. But like. I think a lot of people have that same thing, like, um, where parents just, like, shoot him down or, like, family. Like, I know Luna, his parents, even when he went up in price, he was like, what? You can't do this? What? You know, like, freaking out. So that was just, like, you were just getting, like, swayed by this understanding of, like, oh, it's not a serious thing. You need to still work a job type of deal. Yeah, so, and then, like, prior to, you know, uh, working in the fields, my mom and my dad got separated. So, like, that was another hard thing that I had to go through. Go, uh, going into barbering you know so um i guess you can say like barbering was my escape mm. like of reality right you know like when i was cutting hair I, I wasn't thinking about nothing else i was talking to my friends like it was just me and the client or my friends right um and uh um it, it was really just very tough trying to explain to my parents like this is what i want to do you know and i remember getting home that day from uh from work and cutting, cutting until like one in the morning I, I, my, my light bulb turned on like that's like, I was like, you know what, let this is what I want to do. I'm going to school. Like, mm. Luckily, uh, luckily I, I, I freaking, you know, m- made it through school. Cause you know, I'm sure you went to barber school too. And it's uh it's one of those things where it's kind of bullshit, you know? I don't know, dude. I got, um, I got in and out pretty quick. They were doing some sketch shit. So I got in and out in two right? months. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, like, like it's a bunch of like, they don't like, okay. Barbering school is cool if you're trying to get your license, but like, it's not necessarily like they, they don't teach you how to cut hair at yeah. all. That's like a you huge know? misconception. Cause I hop on barbers. Like I want to join the EM program. Like, Oh, I got to get my license first. I'm like, why dude? Like it's, just, it's, it's like, you know, you can, I mean, I understand if you want to get into a barber shop and like be legit, like obviously you need a license, but like, man, I, I'm, I'm, this is not for, this is not like all barber schools, but for the majority of them, I think they're pretty like, they're more like, just give me the cash, we'll get you your hours. So it's like, give me cash, so like you can get this piece of paper to like cut hair. It's not really there to, to yeah. teach and inform. I, like I said, I know there are probably some good ones out there um, that do their due diligence at best, but like, I know for the majority of them, because you're, you're in, uh, where are you located again? You're in like Southern California or the Bay Area? Um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a city close to Fresno. Okay. Okay. It's, it's Los Banos. So it's, okay. it's, it's uh, 45 minutes out from Fresno. Got it. Okay. And then how um, how old are you again, by the way, right now? I'm 27. Oh, we're same age. Okay. So yeah, yeah. how old were you when you were doing these jobs then? Like, were you like straight I out was, of high school? Yeah. Uh, well, during high school, um, I actually had a job hmm. working. So I, I would I would get home, do my homework, and then I would go to work at around 6. I wouldn't get home until like freaking 1 in the morning and then go, and go to school the next day. Um, so... It, so during the week, I didn't really have time to cut hair because of work and school. Dude, you don't so, have time for um, homework. <laughs> what the hell? It was, bar- dude. It was, it was a tight squeeze. It yeah. was a tight squeeze, but I, I, I somehow made it out alive. Mm. Um, because like dealing with my parents' divorce and stuff like that, like that, I, I just wanted to stay busy. Like that's that's all I wanted to do was just stay busy. I didn't want to think about nothing else. Just keep me busy. I don't care if I'm here until one in the morning. I, I don't care as long as I'm busy. Little did I know that was gonna affect me later on. Later on, because like now, because like now, like I, I have freaking backaches and shits. Like fuck, you know, like because I, I know it's for effect from those jobs that I that I've done before. Sure. Um, I think I stopped working in those hard jobs when I was 22. 22 is when I started barber school. Okay. And then I I graduated when I was 23, got my license right away. I I passed it at my first try. Um, so I was blessed enough to actually. Get in my first try, and then I went to a shop right after. Literally the next day, I went to work, 
started building up my clientele in this little town called Fireball, California. Um, that's my first where I, where I originally first started. What? How much were you and charging? Uh, I started charging thirteen dollars. Whoa! So you were still charging like what? You were f- charging five dollars still in barber school? Is that correct, or did you go yeah, up? Yeah, I was. Uh, barber school. I went up to eight. Okay, so you had like a five dollar increase like <laughs> after that. So you, yeah. you to you, you're like fuck yeah, I'm, I'll do this all day. Yeah, mm. you know, yeah, yeah. So, so like, so being in a barber shop compared to the field work, it wasn't. It was like better for me. Like this is like the corporate job for me. Like this is like you got Jeff AC. Bezos type shit. You got AC. <laughs> yeah. You could you yeah. relax. We'll do whatever you want. Yeah. You okay. Know, but I remember because I, I was I was in Fireball for about three years, and I remember just looking up, and I was like, "Damn, this this is this really can't be it for me." Like, like is it okay for me to want more? And mm-hmm. then I was like, "Yeah, it's okay for me to want more. I want more." So that's when I decided to move to Las Banas, which is a, a town uh, thirty minutes away from from Fireball. Um, luckily, I lived in the town in the middle of them, so I, the drive was nothing mm-hmm. at all. It was it was nothing, and. Um, I moved to I moved to Los Banos and again I had to restart my whole clientele. I I did have people commuting for me, but it wasn't really like all crazy. So it it took me a while to to build up the clientele. I was at a, at a shop for at that, at that shop for about a year. Um, that's actually when I joined the first program. Uh, your your first yeah. program, the the, Dominate, the, the this, social media one. Yeah, just on social yeah. media, not nothing business. So like you moved you moved to Los Banos and like um. That's when you joined, or were you there for a little bit, kind of built things up, or was it just like, oh, I moved here, let me get on the social media thing right away? Uh, yeah, yeah, right away. Right oh away. no I shit. Knew, hmm. Yeah, I, I knew like it, it, it was a no brainer. Like I, I, I seen your ads, hmm. and then I seen um uh J J Barber, uh, bearded barber. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, J J J J the bearded barber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He um he actually was the one that persuaded me to do it because I asked him about it, and he's like, bro, if you just pay attention and just do what he says, you'll, you'll be fine. And of course, you know, like I had my hardships with the program. Like I, I, I didn't have no direction leading up to EM. You know, yeah. It was just about posting and and trying to get uh, many a lot of views, followers, and stuff like that. Like that 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 was the race that I thought that I had a I, I had to play or yeah. uh, or had to win, right? You know, so leading up to EM, it was, it was just a whole different yeah. ballgame, man. <laughs> well, because I mean, that was on me because like I thought I I I seriously thought that like a lot of people like would understand that like, cool, you're gonna be able to generate clients and like also like build up business. I thought barbers would know that intuitively, but like what I didn't, you know, account for is that a lot of barbers aren't business owners at first. Like even yourself, dude, you came from like a working, a hard working job. So like the only, I guess, paradigm or like worldview you have is like more hard work will equal more pay or longer hours, more pay. Like that type of like trade off instead of understanding like um, how to scale a business, what that requires and like, Again, when I was working with South Bay Chris, it was just like, again, the only only one that really got great long-term success. And I was like, oh, shit. Okay. This is like something I need to change up. And um, all right. So you were doing that for a while because I do remember you were posting things. Were, I, I do remember looking at your profile and talking to you here and there because like you were, you were a customer of, the, of that pro of that course. It wasn't even a program. It was like just a hands-off course. <laughs> I, I I remember like a lot of barbers talking so much shit to me. Like, why did you join that? Like, that was like the... <laughs> I, I I think I remember you making a podcast about that, and it's like like it, it makes no sense to me why barbers don't like like want to be uh like yeah uh what is the word I'm looking for uh criticized right in in, yeah. in, in, in the direction where they, it's, it's gonna help them yeah um I got so much like backlash from it it was like yeah. oh why did you spend money on that yeah like, I st- I still get people like like Joel will send me like DMs from barbers asking him like is this a scam like. He or like the funniest thing is that p- people think like Joel or Jay Jay Fedex people know, like I'm just like using. He's not actually part of the program. I'm just like faking it. And I'm like, dude, we talk like every <laughs> single week. What are you talking? Like he's just like, dude, this is like getting out of hand. Like because it's just it's just silly stuff. Or like even Luna or um, who else sent me? Did you? I don't know if you sent me things. There was another like there's barbers in the program all day. They'll send things of like other barbers that see there in the program, and they'll be like, oh, is this legit? Like I heard like you know, is it? you know, like Dude. fake or whatever. I'm like, oh, all right. It's just, it just comes with the territory and I've come to accept that. But I think you'll always get people like that regardless. Like, dude, like there'll be people who think like Jeff Bezos is the most evil man in the world. Right. And like, he's provided <laughs> so many jobs and like, you know, it's like, look, he, he's done the work and like, that's the reward and incentive that you're able to get if you put in the right work and if you solve problems. Right. Um, Definitely. So 
Okay, so you were doing that, posting videos, nothing was really working out. What were you charging at that point in time? Like, is it you went from, th how'd you go from 13 to then 30 when we started working okay, in EO? So, okay, so, th so I, when I went up to 13, uh, it was like my price raise because I got my license, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, I know my, I got a license, I can charge more type of thing. You, you, right, yeah. You, know, yeah, you know, um, uh, and not only that, that was what the shop owner was charging and he told me, he goes, bro, if you want, if one, you can charge more, but this is what I'm charging. And, you know, so I pretty much, I, I followed, I followed in his footsteps. I was like, all right, fine. I'll just charge what you're charging. Cause it makes sense. I'm not going to like charge more. And then, cause, because nobody knows me here, you know? Sure. So, uh, I went up to 13 and then I want to say about six months later, I went up to 15. 15. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 15. That didn't, that didn't really do much that, that, yeah. that people, I was still busy, you know, yeah. that didn't really do much. And then uh, I want to say about a year later is when I started doing appointments. And the funny thing about, about that, the way I did it and the way I was allowed to do it at the shop was the owner didn't uh, want me to do them during the week. He wanted me to only do them on weekends. So for weekends, I was searching 20 and then during the week it was 15 for walk-ins. Hmm. Yeah, it was, it was, it Some was weird very, shit. Yeah. yeah, weird shit. Yeah. So, um, like his theory was let's, let's see how the, the people here are going to react to this. So let's just do weekends first. And I was like, okay, well, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, I don't know much about this. So yeah, this is sure. whatever, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, so as, as my weekend started getting busier, um, I started, uh, um, I, I had a Friday to the mix. I started doing Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays appointments only, and during the week it was it was uh, fifteen. So I gotta see yeah, this going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, it was it's uh, it was it's for sure a journey, man. It was for sure a journey. So, um, and then from there, uh, I um, I told the owner I was like, dude, like I'm already booked up a month in advance, all my weekends. Like, can I just let's just do all week? And he's like, fuck it, let's just do all week then. So, so twenty bucks for an appointment every day. From Tuesday to Sunday, um, I did, uh, I think, dude, it was crazy hours. Like, mm. I would do, like, 12 hours, 16 hours, sometimes even 18, you know? Yeah. There was yeah. one Friday where I didn't, I, I, I went in at um, 6 a.m., and I didn't leave that shop until, like, 2 a.m. Jesus, dude. Like, yeah, it was it was crazy. And, yeah. like, the most I'd gone out of that day for one client was $40. And at, at the time, when I seen 220s, yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. But that's the grind that most barbers will go in. Because, again, too, most, most like, dude, like, I, w I didn't own a business before. I was just either, I worked valet, which was, again, to, like, hustle it out, like, you know, work more hours, get, like, some more tips. And, like, that's all you can do. I mean, you came from working the fields, truck driving, like, to, to, I think to most people, like, even to us back then, that was like, oh, this is the game we have to play in order to make more money. This is what we have to do. Um, all right. Well, I guess, like, because you're at 75 right now. I guess before we kind of get into your journey, like what's for right now where you're at mentally and like where you were at prior, like um, with that, like 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. mentality, what's the biggest difference that you see? So now the biggest difference that I see now is that um, I'm, I'm able to get more sleep. <laughs> it's yeah. for sure one thing. I'm able to get more sleep. Um, I don't have to slave freaking 12 hours just to make my bills anymore you know like uh, like my mindset is, is more peaceful now like i i meditate on, on a daily now um opposed to back then i was just so like like clients this clients that want this clients mm. want that like i was just so like 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 mind bottled because clients were just texting me back and forth about they didn't like this and then they and one client was pissed off about this and whatever you know now now it's like i like now that being at 75 i make sure my clients don't have to ask me anything before they leave the chair. Because once they leave the chair, at, th at this point, that's all That's all I can do for you, man, you know? Sure. So, um, like, my mindset now has for sure shifted since I joined DM. Like, I, I remember just smoking weed all the fucking time. So, like, now it's just like, like, dude, like, I should have done this a long time ago. Yeah. Like, what the hell? Yeah, you, you, know? and, you and Greg, that was, you and Greg, I'm sure there's <laughs> other people that were just, like, smoking too much weed. I'm like, dude, like, you can't make good business decisions. Like, and once you once I you agree. hit that, people were like, "Oh, I can think better." I'm like, "Bullshit! Be sober. Try that out for like a week. I'm sure I, I you can think." Of. Dude, like, I, I think agree. for you too, you're just so much more clear minded right now. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, like, uh, it was for sure one of those things that I had to overcome uh, because I felt like I needed it. Right? You know, um, I felt like I needed it when in reality you don't. It's just a thing that you put on yourself for whatever reason, right? You know? Yeah. All right. So and, like, and go ahead. you know, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go I was ahead. just gonna say like, all right. So you were. 
thirty bucks. Uh, I know, like once we got you, you joined EM. I think I reached out to you. I think I DM'd you because I, I remember like you before. I know I was building this thing. I was like, you know what? He doesn't really have that much success. Let me tap in with him. See where he's at. Well, I guess why did you choose to join the EM program, uh, even though you had gone through the dominating social media program prior? Uh, the reason why I joined joined DM is because I I I've seen. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of barbers that I look up to gain success from it, like Jay Faded, for one. Like, I actually look up for his work. Um, South Bay Chris is another one. Uh, Jay, uh, I don't know if JJ is in the elevator mentorship. He's but in I, it, but I, I, still, I don't think he's really doing too much. Um, yeah, I, think I mean, like, I still I still follow his work ethic as well. Mm. Um, I started noticing that these barbers just, like, popping off. I was like, dude, like, like if, if it works for them, like, what makes me think I, it, it won't work for me? I just got to do the work, right, you know? So um, even though like it was a rocky thing with the with the with the, with the first one, I, I knew for a fact this one was way more because obviously the, the price point is more and you know and and obviously the, the we get more help opposed to the first one. Yeah. You know, so I I knew it was a no brainer. Like I I mean from that call that I, that interview that we did from the first one, I knew I wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. Like it was it wasn't no no question. It was crazy too because if I'm being honest, like I did it in the midst of a pandemic. And and these barbers don't believe me. Like when I yeah. tell them, like I like like if I I I have a few barbers that that are like like um they're like back and forth with it. Like oh should I join, bro? Should I join, bro? Just do it. Like I like if you take it from me, bro. I did it in the mix of a pandemic. One, two. I did it with barely any cash research because I knew this was, this was gonna work. I knew if I did the work, there was no like going back. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So um, and then here we are now. I'm I'm at seventy five. Um, I have um uh, I have a clear image of my business now. Like like never before like it's it's just crazy to me like i know what's going in and what's going out how much i'm making a day and where my money's going opposed to back then it was like oh well i have five people today this is how much i'm bringing in cool yeah hopefully tomorrow's better yeah <laughs> like, yeah yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah that's that's i just remember like thinking that as a barber like fuck only three people today well hopefully tomorrow's better it's always that hope and pray thing well maybe tomorrow maybe next week uh maybe it's just like something's going on maybe like everybody's busy you know you're just kind of like you're you're not in control of the business. That, that's what I think is the biggest difference um, from like again. Do I call it like a barber who's a charity versus a business? Like a charity is more like ah maybe tomorrow ah maybe you know next week ah maybe people are busy maybe they got family events I agree. and then waiting around for like I don't know Memorial Day to happen or some type of holiday <laughs> event to be busy and make money versus like dude just build the business to where it's like that every single week um, no matter what. Like, like I do feel like running a charity and a business is one of the hardest pills for a barber to swallow. Yeah, in my opinion, yeah. because because around my area, a lot of barbers are like, oh, but my friends, my friends, yeah. my friends, I, I can't do it to my friends, bro, my friends. And I'm like, bro, but like they, they have to respect that you're a business first. Like, what about you? Like, you actually are taking the time to learn the craft and, and appreciate the craft when they're just wanting a haircut. Like, I would like I, I, um, I, I talk to one barber every day from my area and I told my bro, but you got to understand is that your clients come to you for one hour out of their day. Like that's a small fragment out of their day. Like you can't, you can't paint a picture for them and say like, oh my, uh, without me, they're nothing. No, like, like, like if you can't get there, they're, they're gonna move them to the next one, bro. Like, you, like but that's that, that's what you, you, you have to understand. Like you, you're not this like celebrity to them, you know? Like you're just one hour out of their day, you know? Yeah, I think, I think it's just like, you know, cause a lot of people create relationships with, with their clients. And like, I, I mean, I did too, but like, um, one thing that I just realized is like, dude, it's not like you're just never going to see them again. Like you'd always go out, hang out with them, text them, call them up real quick, see how they're doing. Like, it's not like you're just all of a sudden like ghosting them. It's just like, look, you're running your business. And like, um, uh, man, I, I get a lot of barbers on calls where they're just like, oh man, I don't know. Like, I, I don't want to lose my client. I don't want to lose like that relationship. I'm like, dude, it's your business. Like go hang out with them on the weekend or something. Like go out, you know, <laughs> schedule like a dinner. Like Seriously. if, even if you're in a barbershop, cause of course I worked in a barbershop. Like most of my clients that like didn't, didn't move up with me. Like I still saw them almost every week cause they would be in, with other barbers and I would just catch up with them then. It wasn't like a big deal. It wasn't like this right. bad thing. Like, yeah. The only, the only, the only people that gave, would give me problems. Even if that, I don't think I even experienced that. It was just like, people that you don't really want in your business, right? Like everybody has bad clients or like people who will like not respect, like I call it bad behavior. Those are probably the only people that will do that. And it's a very few, like even, and, and most probably won't even voice that maybe like one or two. And you can't take like one or two's opinion about like the mass majority. It's like, I don't know, dude, going in America and like interviewing like 
three people randomly off the street talking about their political views or whatever they want to do and then thinking that's the whole you know u.s like yeah. population's mindset right <laughs> it's just like it's so it's so big and like it's it's not even like it's a little speck right don't you, you can't take the little drop of water for the ocean um definitely definitely for you i guess um i know what was it like i think about eight weeks or so maybe 10 weeks into the program when you first joined you went from 30 we went up to 50 and then we kind of stagnated for a while we were talking about this before um what kind of happened to you when you stagnated because like of course fuck you joined in like what july last year we went up probably in like september of last year to 50 september 9th oh shit you actually September 9th. Yeah. nice all right yeah, so it I took us it took us a year from 50 to 75 what happened um so a few things that had a had to happen before for me going up to 75 was obviously i had to tighten up some areas in my life which definitely was the smoking weed i definitely had to pull a plug on that mm. um i had to take a sip a few steps away from that and then also um i also had to definitely see what was more important to me than um uh than, than being at 50 so mm. for example like so for example, like I definitely value some, some of my clientele, like I, I definitely value them, but they also knew that, that, that I was going to go up. I, I, I recently had this conversation with my clients. Like, yeah, I, I knew that you were going to, you were going to go up. I knew that already. It, it was just a matter of time. And I was like, damn, like, it's like some of my clientele actually knows that, that I'm going to go up and they keep going up, you know? So, so I, 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 I had to understand that it was nothing personal one. You know, it was only personal, and 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 I I had to explain to a lot of people too that this is just business. Like I I I had a lot of people telling me this is not gonna work, blah blah blah. It's not gonna work. Like projecting fear already on my plans, and I'm like, damn, like like this is one thing that I have to like not listen to for sure. Mm. You know, I I definitely had to shut out all the negativity, cut off a few few people that were just neg- negative, straight up negative. You know, um, I definitely feel like. Like now that I'm at 75, more eyes are on me now in my city because I'm the only one trying to, you know, show people like, okay, if you're a business first, sure. one, you know, you know, one. And, and I feel like, like, um, a, a lot of barbers there, like they, they, they like, I, I, I can't tell you how many times I, I get this on my DMs. Like, like I, I see your ad, bro. I see you on this interview, blah, blah, blah. Like, is it, is it bullshit? Like, no, it's not. Like, you literally got to hit, like, hit them up. Like, I, I, I eventually got tired of, like, explaining myself. So that's another yeah. thing, too, that I, I, I had to stop doing is explaining to myself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, it's just ridiculous. Like, like people were just like, like, how dare you? <laughs> like, yeah. how, how dare you, you know? How dare um, Bezos make more Amazon stores? <laughs> <laughs> how dare he make more jobs? It's just, it's the same it's, thing. It's, yeah. You know, so those are the things that I had to understand and, like, and like remind myself like hey you know like hey you know what it might be slow today but you're working on your business while you're not cutting hair yeah so that's another thing that that that, that i had going on too like i i remember when i went up to 50 and i was like like kind of slow for like a for like i want to say about two weeks i had all this time to focus on tracking um obviously the, the em program i'm i'm almost done with it um i i had more time to work on my content to perfect that ask questions and stuff like that so those are things that had to happen for me to go up to 75 mm. from what I'm realizing now. Yeah. You know, and now that I'm at 75, I know it's going to take another, another big push because now it's, I'm at a, a, another tier and I have to keep going, you know? So would you say like a big thing that held you back once you go up, got up to 50 was like, man, cool. I'm here. Like, I just got to keep doing what I'm doing. Like it was kind of like whatever you were doing at 30, you thought it could apply at 50 bucks and keep you going. Is that what kind of held you back at first too? Definitely, because uh-huh. when I was at thirty dollars, when I was at thirty dollars, I was like, I was like, oh well, tomorrow might be better, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah. well, because <laughs> tomorrow like, might be better. Because it sounds like you had the same habits, like smoking weed, and I, like I, t- I try to be very vocal about this. Like when you go up, like you change the whole business, and you need to step the fuck up, like with your whole business, like with how you structure things, how you track things, and you need to spot the problems head on right then and there to in- ensure that you can like. Because most people, they'll go up and they'll be like, oh, I know it's going to be slow. And they just kind of wait until it like builds back out again. You kind of have to be very proactive. Like you can't just sit back and do the same thing. Because like oh, you, no. you kind of did Pretty that for one. Like it took you over a year to then be in a position to be up to 75. Two, I know that we were talking about before was like, um, man, like I think you talked, you think you said like pride or ego got in your way. Because you would, because you actually stopped hopping on Q&A calls. You stopped like reaching out and getting help. It was more of like, um, 
And what, what was going on for you? Because I honestly don't know. It was just more of like a pride um, and ego thing. It was a more of a, a pride and ego thing to where like I felt like I didn't want to ask too many questions to get the same answers back. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't want to ask the same questions and like maybe I told myself maybe if I just study certain people and like still like ask certain questions, you know, I, I could somewhat get ahead, but that, that, that didn't work either. So I definitely had to put my pride and ego to the side and I yeah. was like, you know what, maybe let's hop back on and like, like yeah. let's sell in. Cause I, cause since, since I joined, I haven't, I have not missed a day of posting. Yeah. I, I have not missed a day. Cause I think it was, it was like, I do remember cause I, I, I mean, sometimes you still get in redundancy of like, you know, it's the same issues. I, I do remember it was the same issues that popped up and you wouldn't fix them. And the reason why you kept on asking questions like, well, this, this isn't working. What do I need to do for this? I'm like, dude, you still haven't fixed this first. Like fix this first. And then we could like move on to everything else. It was like a domino effect. And it, I guess for you was, I mean, I know you're talking about smoking weed. Was smoking weed a big factor of like not handling the first thing and being too jittery and being all over the place or what? Why didn't you just fix the damn things first? <laughs> um. Honestly, I don't know. It was just one of those things where, like, if if I wanted to do it, I I, I had to do it myself. But then I, I sat back and I was like, dude, like, people are telling you this for a reason. They're not telling you this to be a fucking asshole or whatever. Yeah. You know, they're telling you this for a reason because they want to see you succeed. Like, quit it. Quit being such a fucking dickhead. Like, come on, let's do this. Let's yeah. Get the fucking work on, you know? Yeah. So, I think. Um, what? I was going to say, I think that's what holds a lot of barbers back. Like, not getting help because they think they can do it or, like, oh, no, nah, like, what, for whatever reason, they'll just have, like, a very big pride and ego thing. I think I saw, like, Chris Basio post something about this, like, one time about, like, you know, I mean, I, I, I try to not say this, like, because I don't want to seem like, you know, like, people have programs, they'll be like, oh, you need, you you should be more open to getting a mentor, and they, they run a program. So, so it sounds kind of, like, too marketish. So I try to stray away from that. But, like, I remember Basio saying, like, you know, the barber, the barber industry needs to kind of, like, drop the ego a little bit and, like, understand that they... There's a reason why they're at the position they're at because they can't, they don't know what to do and they need to get help from somebody who knows how to do it. Um, I, I think that was like right on the head. I mean, um, again, I probably won't be too vocal about that because like I, I just don't like seeing people do that personally. So, um, like, who I, I agree with you. Um, but like, I agree with you. Like, I, I agree with you 100%. Because yeah. Because, like, you know, I do feel like a lot of barbers think this of think of barbering of, of, of this of this thing that we do is cutting hair. I feel like they think of it as like this rock star lifestyle where like they think they can get on stage and cut hair in front of millions of people when it's not like that at all. Like they, they, they have it, they, they have the whole game messed up when it's actually a, a business. Like yeah. you, you, if you like I I recently learned and I it took me a while, but I recently learned that if I just treat it from what it is, I'll get more back than if I treat it with what it's not. Yeah. I I just remember you know? I I, mean, I think I think everybody has that outlook at first. I used to have that outlook. Like, oh man, cut on stage! I want to have people watching me. And Same then like here. and Same then here. like I go to a show and there's people doing it and there's like two OGs that are like watching some person just cut hair randomly off to the side and they're both talking shit about that behind his back. I'm just like, oh, this is stupid, right? Like it's just like yeah. it's it's not like what. I don't know. I never, I never like once I remember seeing that. I'm like, oh, this is like it's just the perception versus the reality. But the perception is like, man, I don't really know what the perception is. Like, oh man, they're gonna love my fades, and then like the reality is like, dude, nobody gives a shit. Like, you know, it, like focus and, on your yeah. business. Yeah, focus on your business. Like, focus on you. Focus on like your future again too. Like, um, I think barbering should just be a stepping stone to the next thing. Like, you have a pocket of time. Don't be a barber forever. Take this to the max level. Increase cash flow. Increase capital. Save money. Be good with business. Learn how to scale something properly before you move on to the next thing. That way, you have these principles to take in the next thing that will like. Then you could like really expedite your growth in that thing. I agree. Um, I actually uh, prior to this interview, I I, um, I, re- I rewatched Greg's interview, and I caught something from that interview where he was like, "I want to cut hair forever." Mm. Buried me with my clippers. Like, I, I it, it's just funny because like that's the same mentality I had. I wanted to cut hair until I was like 60 or 70 years old, but I'm like, fuck. Now, now, now I want to retire by age 35, you know, and like do something else. Yeah. Maybe, you know, I don't know, have another business of something of some sorts, you know, like, like it's just crazy how joining, when I joined EM, my mindset just completely shifted. Yeah. Like it took, it took me a while, but, um, I, I made it happen. Yeah, like, I feel like if I can do it, and a lot of brother barbers are more than more than capable of doing it. As Absolutely, because well. I think like the majority, of, like the majority of barbers, their perception of what they should do is like cut hair, build a big clientele so they can open a shop, and then make money off barbers 
off that big clientele. And it's like, dude, most barbershop owners, they probably only make like a good off the shop at best, like three to 4k. And like, unless they have multiple shops, unless they have a shit ton of barbers and like do a ridiculous, like commission yeah. split and like just push their barbers to the limit. I, and even then it, I, it's like, you got to look at the, look, like what that outweighs. Like that's so much, I, I the last thing I want to do is manage barbers. Like I talk about this all the time, but I do not want to manage <laughs> no, yeah. barbers. I don't want to like have to focus on like, Hey, be in the shop, cut this and like try to track everything. And then also own like a, a shop in general, all that upkeep. Like I think that's so much comp- complexity um, versus just running your barber business, get up to 15, 20 K a month, be able to scale up your business charging wise, get the right clients in so much more simple, so much more uh, efficient. And Definitely. then again too, it. It's you can, you can easily get out of barbering just by doing that. You don't need anything else. I think that's like what a lot of barbers forget or just don't know. And it's, and it's crazy because like, coming up you know as as um and in this, in this industry like i thought adding adding more to my services was going to give me more money yeah when it doesn't it doesn't no it doesn't work yeah. i i eventually got tired of doing all that crap and i just stopped and, yeah. and i stopped even more when i joined the, the program yeah you know um uh, it, it's just crazy how like how like the perception of what barbers think this, this industry is like to what the reality is it like yeah you just said you know it, it, it's it's better to um have a better business structure opposed to being booked up every single day. I remember like being at the, at the, at the shop, uh, I think it was last year and I would go in probably for like five cuts a day and I would go home and then my other, everyone was like, where are you going? And I'm like, going home. I'm going to go focus on this shit. Like, well, while they're, while they would be there to like, I don't know, 12 o'clock at night. Like yeah. I'd be gone by like five. <laughs> yeah. You know? You know, it's just crazy. Like, and then, it, it, and, and with that, I feel like it caused an uproar of negativity around around me. Like, oh, he doesn't work. Like, he's 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 no barber. It's just he it's just, just hair and leaves. It's just the time allocation. Like, yes, like I th- again too. I think like cutting hair is like you're you. That's when you clean up what you've like, you know, gotten in from like what you do outside. Like the real business, like how you grow the business, is not when you're cutting hair. It's what you do outside of that time and like the focal point. What there needs to be improvement, the strategy. Like cutting hair is just cleaning up the mess that we created from from that. It's like the repercussions of that thing. Um, and I think again, to, to be able to get up successfully, you have to think long term. Do I want to take this short term money, work a lot, have zero time to build the business long term wise and just stay here and do this thing redundantly and, and like the hamster wheel? Or do I want to cut some things short, allocate more time, learn how to do the right things? And then, you know, in a few months, you know, be able to scale my business up because of the time I put into this thing. Um, it's just, it's just again to that perception versus reality thing. Um, I guess for you, what, 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 I had a point before we got on that that I wanted to ask about. Um, well, I mean, you're at 75 now. Like, what's what's been like the biggest help? Uh, I know we talked about in terms of just the business structure. What do you found the most helpful about being in the EM program? Of course, the community, everything like that. But just like, I mean, maybe even just the curriculum base. What's the most important thing or the thing that's most helped you out the most? Tracking, mm. tracking, man. Ever since I started tracking and knowing what my business is producing, I've been so peaceful. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's it's just great, man. Like I don't have to worry about okay, this month I made this much. What about next month? You yeah. know, like that. That's probably the number one thing that I loved about uh, EM is tracking. Uh, uh, obviously, the community, and I met some pretty dope people, and I still talk to those people to this day. So that's one of the things that I found very very helpful, and I feel like every barber should hard nail on that. Yeah. Just because it, it it saves you a headache, it saves you a huge headache, man. Like I remember being in the shop and cutting up freaking twelve people a day, but the next day I I might have gotten maybe eight when I wanted that consistently, you know? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was probably one of the things that I that I loved about the, the program was was getting to know myself and where I was at and what, and especially what I was doing wrong, you mm-hmm. know? Like the, I I definitely um uh, knocked off a, a lot of huge habits. I stopped going to bed late. Um, I stopped, I stopped smoking. We obviously that's another one. Um, I started going to the gym, gym more. Uh, I started to eat well. I started to actually do the things that I wanted to do outside of barbering, not just cut hair all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause I mean, as barbers, barbers don't know this, but, and they refuse to, and they, and they refuse. I, I honestly feel like they refuse to understand is that, that, that we get burnt out, you know? Absolutely. You know what I mean? We, we, we get burnt out. And we just kind of hide it and push it on the rug. Like, I ah, know this is what I love to do. I'm going to keep cutting hair. Fuck it. Yeah. It's you know? like some self-righteous bullshit. Like, I don't know, dude. It's like, 
what is that called? Um, it's like the group think thing, right? Like if you have a group yeah. of people and you put yourself in that group and their whole awareness is like this thing, even if it's like, man, some madness or just like some, some really like crazy, crazy, like, I guess, perception of what you should be doing, like working yourself to like the bone, like pushing through and like grinding it out, uh, doing 30 haircuts a day. Like you'll, you'll, you'll eventually like, adopt that belief as well too because like you don't want to be the outsider it's very hard for people to be outsiders and like think think differently and i think that's like the big thing i've always tried to do is like man mass population wise like most time the, the population's perception of things is like completely off so like always try to figure out like where what is the mass population they're probably wrong let me go find the answer for myself right um and i think that's what i try to instill in the em program like look a lot of this stuff is bullshit like don't listen to it don't succumb to it like you know, this is probably the more reality of business-wise you should go to. Definitely. Like, um, uh, there's this book that I actually loved, and I reread it again. I don't know how many times, but I actually got it from the resources from, EM, from the EM program, um, Psycho-Cybernetics. Oh, great book. Yeah. That book changed my perception of everything. Like, I read it about, like, three times. Uh, not, not, not front to cover three times, but, like, I went back and, like, got a summary from it or whatever. And and there was one thing from that book that I got that I really stuck with me. If you hang around with five dummies, who's the sixth one? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's that's one of the things that I that I really enjoyed from the program is the resources as well. Like there's a bunch of resources that I that I that I looked through like that changed changed everything. Like another book that I read too recently uh, that from the from the end was uh, Rel- Relentless by uh, by uh, Grover. Another another great that book. book the, that book that book was really really good too. So it's, it's just a bunch of things that I could have been doing before the program that I wasn't doing that that kind of helped me put the right inputs in and here we are now. Yeah. You know, I think also to harp on the tracking things, I know I I know since I've become more vocal about like what we do in EM and like, of course, I'm not going to go into specifics about what we track. Cause like everybody always wants to ask like specifics right? about social media or tracking. The thing that I always and, and I'll just put this out here for people listening and like viewing too, like. You know, you always, what we do is like, again, to very optimize for a specific goal. And like what I see a lot of barbers work when they tell me, oh, they're tracking this, tracking that. Like it's all over the, there is no, they're just tracking for tracking's sake, right? It's not for a goal. It's like, I don't know, dude, like, let's say, fuck, what's a good example of this? Man, let's say like you're trying to like bulk eat, right? Like you're in the gym, you're working out and like you want to get a diet to bulk, but you're only eating like chocolate cake every day, right? Technically you're eating a lot, right? And bulking and yeah. like. But it's just not, it's not the right foods. It's not optimized for the right thing. Like you're just going to gain more fat and it's just like, or maybe you're like, you're counting just calories, calories in, calories out. And you're counting calories from like, I don't know, cake, cookies, sodas, all this stuff. It's like, cool, they're calories, but it's not optimized for the goal. And that's why I see a lot of barbers doing incorrectly. Of course, again, too, just to be ethical wise, I'm never going to share what we do tracking wise outside of the course. or social media. Of course. But it's just like, man, like, don't overthink it. Like, don't overthink the damn thing. Like. If anything, get help, but don't like, you could probably do more damage trying to overthink it and trying to guess and trying to like create something like an abstraction of what you, of what your perception is versus like the reality of it. That's, and I think like what we've done, like, you know, our NCA tracking sheet and like all these other things, like it's all directed towards one thing and it's like the scale, the push forward. And it's like, you know, it's been, I mean, I've, you, I think you've seen it too. Like I've iterated these sheets like to improve them over like even the past year. No, definitely. Um, I think you've uh, like you definitely are in the right path and like building building up these barbers for shirts sure. because I mean I'm one of them and and it's it's a great thing honestly. Like um, when I when I when when I get all because ever since you've uh, actually shouted me out on the hmm. on Instagram, barbers been DMing me back and forth asking me like the same things. But what Jay Fede has sent you, like, yeah, it's just bullshit. It's like no, dude, hit him up set up an interview like talk to him yeah and see how it goes like it's the, that simple don't overthink it yeah you know and a lot of people especially around my area you know yeah, a lot of people don't understand like dude i'm not gonna like i only accept like maybe 20 percent of people who even book a call in the first place and that's if like i accept the call so it's like dude you're like if even if you're thinking about it, you should at least like book a call and like i'll let you know i'll like because i don't want to bring in anybody that i can't help or i can't Definitely. scale like i want to make sure they get results and i think a lot of people Definitely. i think i think that's just like a repercussion of like look there's a lot of people who do ba- bad things and like online like who run ads and do all this stuff so i get it right it's it's like very it's not a, it's not a healthy space it's not a space that has like a good repertoire and i look i'm just focused again too if they're if they're in and they they 
they're ready to take like action, great, we'll get you up. But if not, like, look, that's probably says more about them than it does myself. And I've kind of, of just learned that. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, look, my, like at the end of the day, my, uh, I mean, you guys know, like, fuck, I'll spend like five hours on a Q&A call. <laughs> like going to like I've seen, 11, yeah, I've 11 seen, PM I've seen some of those Q&A calls. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like dead tired, but I'm like, fuck it. We just got to get these questions, build this business for them, answer anything. Um, I guess la- to kind of wrap up, because <laughs> speaking of Q&A, we got a Q&A coming in about an hour. Um, yeah. I guess what what piece of advice would you give somebody who may, might have been in a similar situation as you prior to EM or just a younger barber looking at this program trying to figure things out? Uh, a piece of advice that I would um, offer is definitely don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. You're going to be fine. If anything, is going to help you and it's not going to break you. Just do the work. Honestly. Yeah. Um, it might it might seem like, like everyone's against you, but in reality, it's just your pride and ego. Drop that and you'll be fine. It's like it's like a it's like a space rocket, like getting it out. They're gonna face turbulence. You're gonna have gravity trying to pull you back down. Think of that as like all the barbers like trying to like, oh, what are you doing? What you can't charge more? It's just like they they just never done it. They don't understand the business. And it's just like look, you know, you have the tools, and also you have like community of like I don't even know how many bars we have in the program. I mean, like one seventy five, maybe closer to two hundred right now. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, that like you know support you, and you can always like reach out to and get help from. Um, that's what I think is like really dope too. Like. That we would build an yeah. actual community of like barbers, like I've because I see like everybody. <laughs> it's funny, I just a little off tangent. I, somebody sent me a DM like it was like last week. He was like, "Why do all your barbers like that you you shout out? They don't follow you." And he was like trying to get at like something like, "Oh, you did something wrong to them. They you don't they don't follow you." I'm like, dude, I could give a <laughs> shit if they don't follow me. Like as long like I work with them personally. Like we're all great friends, and like I don't I could give a shit about a follow thing, right? Yeah. It's more about like look. Um, it's just their focal point. Um, but, you know, like I see that, you know, everybody kind of follows each other and like interacts. And like, I know people like you say you talk to Luna. I didn't even know that. Like I, there's things of, of like friendships and communications that go on. that I don't even know about things really dope. Like, it's crazy. Like I've met people from the, just in program alone, alone from the other side of the freaking continent. Like yeah. Greg, for example, he's from Philadelphia. Luna, he's from Chicago. Mm. Um, uh, I especially, of course, people from my, back, my own backyard, like Manny, 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 Manny Fresh. I don't yeah. know if you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, him, I, I talk to him a lot. Eric, Eric Meza, I talk to him a lot. Um, so it's it's a bunch of people and that that are going after the same thing, and it's great because we're all going through the same trials and tribulations in in a sense. Oh yeah. yeah. I think oh, pu- fucking awesome. Yeah, your, your your screen froze. I don't know if it got recorded, but I think your screen kind of froze um, when you were talking. And I was like, oh shit. Oh shoot. No, you're good though. Like we'll, oh. we'll we'll see if it records or not. So if it did freeze, my apologies, everybody. But technical difficulties. Um, it's all good. Any, other than that, dude, I mean, like we've been on this for like an hour so far. It's like 47 minutes. I'll let you go because I, I also got to get ready for the Q and A call. I just want to say thank Definitely. you, thank you, thank you for the interview, dude. Like I know you're busy um, and. Look, let's not take a fucking year to like get up again. Like, I definitely want to make sure you're at 75. Let's get you up to 100 real quick. Um, oh heck yeah! Because I'm super excited to see your growth, dude. And honestly, like, no, it's just same here. just your work ethic. Like, um, you're probably one of the harder working dudes in the program. That could be your downfall sometimes, because like sometimes you just yeah. do, you redundantly do the <laughs> same stuff and not iterate. But like, I I fully believe, like, dude, you you'll be at like 150, 200 in no time. Just I, I'm really excited for you, honestly. I, yeah, so am I, and um, and again, I I appreciate uh, you having me on call. Mm-hmm. One, and two, it, it's great what you're doing with these barbers. You know, I, every every now and then we all need a, a slap in the head. You know what I mean? To kind of like snap out of it, and it's great. You know, we wouldn't be here today without you, man. So it's it's wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you. I always love playing whack a mole with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, brother. Other than that, uh, I'll see you on the Q and A call. Of course. Right, Enjoy. Brother. Thank you.